Hello friends, welcome to the second session on this lecture song, Sing Chong by George Bernard Shaw. In this video, I wish to take you through five elements about the author Bernard Shaw, a note on the work considered Sing Chong, the structure of the play, a brief summary of the play, and also an idea on the characters. George Bernard Shaw Shaw is an Anglo-Irish writer, a person who lived for around a century. He was born in the latter part of the 19th century and he lived through the first half of the 20th. An Irish writer, he moved to London and after much struggle, emerged as a reputed critic of the theatre and music. He was chosen to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1925. Have a look at his, some of his noted plays. As a British dramatist, Shaw is often rated only second to Shakespeare. His impact is such that there exists a word Shavian, which means in the manner of Shaw or his works or an admirer of Shaw and his writings. St. John is a play by Shaw on the life and trials of John of Arc, published in 1924 not long after the canonization of John of Arc by the Roman Catholic Church, which was in 1920. The play dramatizes what is known of her life based on the substantial records of the trial. Shaw studied the transcripts and decided that the concerned people acted in good faith according to their beliefs. The play was received Enthusiastically, both in the United States, where it is premiered in Broadway and in England. Shaw's biographer Stanley Weintraub remarks Even the Nobel Prize Committee no longer know Shaw after St. John. Shaw and his wife Charlotte spent their latter days in a country house which they named Shaw's Corner. They maintained the garden there, which had a statue of St. John. As per their desire, when they died, some of their ashes were scattered around this statue. Shaw wrote in his preface to St. John, There are no villains in this pe the piece. Crime, like disease, is not interesting. It is something to be done away with by general consent, and that is all there is about it. It is what men do at their best with good intentions, and what normal men and women find that they must and will do in spite of their intentions. That really concerns us. Structure of the play. Shaw himself describes his play as a chronicle play in six scenes and an epilogue. So here we have a preface, six scenes and an epilogue. As we said, we have six scenes here. Let me take you through a brief summary of the scenes. After the six scenes, we have an epilogue as well. Scene 1. It's AD 1429. A young country girl, Joan of Arc, or sometimes known as the maid, meets Robert de Bautricourt, a gentlemanly squire, 
and tells him she needs horses and armor to go to the top of France and to raise the siege of Orleans, a city held captive by the English forces. She knows that a siege would be possible because the voices of saints Margaret and Catherine have told her what to do. Upon being convinced by the maid's simplicity, Captain Dreebotrico grants her request. Scene 2 Upon arriving at the Dauphin's castle, the maid encounters all sorts of difficulties, especially with the Dauphin who wants nothing to do with the wars and fighting. But she is able to instill enough courage in him so that he finally consents to let her lead the army. Scene 3 John then goes to the Loyal River near Orleans, where she encounters Dinoy, the commander of the French forces. He explains the necessity of waiting until the wind changes, but John is determined to lead her forces against the English stronghold without waiting. Suddenly, the wind does change favorably, and Dinoy pledges his allegiance to the maid. The fourth scene. Sometime later in the English camp, Warwick, the leader of the English forces, and his chaplain Disturber are maintaining that the maid must be a witch because there is no other way of accounting for the heavy English losses and defeats except by sorcery. The Bishop of Bivy, Peter Caution, enters and discusses the fate of John of Arc. Caution's principal intellectual concern is that John is setting up her own private conscience in the place of the authority of the church. Warwick is instead concerned that John is telling the common people and the serfs to pledge their allegiance directly to the king whereas the entire feudal system is based upon the lower classes pledging their allegiance to their immediate lords and masters. Caution also adds that John is trying to get the common people to pledge further allegiance to their native countries, France and England, instead of the universal Catholic Church. Thus, for different reasons, both agree that the maid must be put to death. Scene 5 After more victories, John has finally been able to fulfill her promise to drive the English back and have the Dauphin crowned king in the cathedral of Reeves. After the ceremony, John is anxious to move on and capture Paris and drive the English from the city. The Dauphin, however, is content now with what he has recaptured. Commander Dinoy is hesitant to start another campaign after all of the recent successes. And the Archbishop is beginning to find John to be too proud and defiant. John then realizes that she must stand alone in the same way that saints have always stood alone. And in spite of the warning that if she falls in the enemy's arms, neither the military nor the state nor the church will lift a hand to rescue her. The last scene. It is Nine months later, John is standing trial for heresy. She has been imprisoned and has been questioned many times about the validity of her voices. Her accusers force John to admit that her voices were not heavenly, but instead came from Satan. After her recantation of the voices, 
that is she agrees that her the voices the claim of the voices that she is hearing they are false so she recants so after her recantation her judges sentence her to perpetual imprisonment and isolation leaving off only bread and water john rejects this horrible horrible punishment and the tales of her recantation she is immediately carried to the stake and burned as a witch afterward the executioner enters and announces that john's heart would not burn now we have the epilogue some 25 years later john appears before the king the former dauphin and her chief accusers who have now been condemned by a subsequent court which has pronounced john innocent of all charges and her judges guilty of all sorts of crimes the time then moves to 1920 when john is declared to be a saint by the church as such she now has the power to return as a living woman and she asks everyone present if she should return this is a horrifying prospect for them all and they all confess that they wish her to remain dead john then asks of god o oh lord how long before the world will be ready to accept its saints now we'll have a look at the characters we have 17 characters here they are listed in a few slides first please go through the names and the very brief descriptions attached to each name for a more elaborate reading regarding the characters as well as the plot and also the other elements discussed in this video lecture you are requested to visit the blog post of uh, cms college department of english the details of the blog will be given towards the end of this presentation do wait and go through the details of the characters Thank <laughs> you.